When you launch Adobe Fresco, the first thing that you'll see is the home screen. Here you can create a new drawing or painting from scratch, which is what we'll do in this lesson. You can tap Import and Open to import an image from another location, such as Dropbox, or you can open images that you've recently worked on. Let's go ahead and start a new image by tapping on the Create New button. In this screen there are a variety of presets that you can choose from, or you can create a custom size. I'm going to tap on Print, and then I'll tap on the little arrow next to the word Poster down here, and I'll choose to switch to a landscape format. Then I'll tap on the poster icon to open up a blank document into Fresco. I'm going to start by going up to the Pixel Brush, and in the Favorites, I'm going to choose the Ink Stains. Now let me clarify that all of these brushes are found in different Pixel Brush groups, and I have added them to the Favorites in my version of the app. If you're using Fresco for the first time, you won't see any brush favorites here. The Ink Stains brush can be found in the FX brushes. I'm going to tap on the color chip, and I'm going to use this color wheel here to dial in a bluish green color, something like that. Then I'm just going to paint over the center of the image to add that in there. I'm using a pretty big brush. It's about 1800 pixels. I'll tap on that color chip again, and I'm going to get more of a violet color. We'll add some of that in. Go back to that color chip, and let's get some orange color in there. And then finally, let's come here and get some yellow color to put in there. So just a blend of different colors. All right, that looks good. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the pixel brush again, and I'm going to choose this gritty brush that I had earlier saved to my favorites. I'm not going to actually paint with the gritty brush. I'm going to use it as an eraser. Now, there is an eraser tool in Fresco, but it doesn't really have a lot of character. It just erases. Now, of course, sometimes you need to have that, and it's very useful that it's there, but what I like to do is use a brush and turn it into an eraser, and I can do that by holding down the touch shortcut in the lower left. So when I do that, my brush is going to become an eraser, and I can erase with all the interesting edge characteristics of that brush. So let me just make this brush a little bit bigger, and I'm going to try to use this eraser brush to define the shape of a bottle. Kind of a stylistic, fanciful bottle, but a bottle nonetheless. And we'll come along there. There we go, that looks good. And let me get my brush a lot bigger now, and I can come in and quickly erase all this other stuff along the sides and the top. All right, that looks good. Let me come to the color chip, and I'm going to tap on the white color up here. And I'll lower the opacity to, I don't know, about 40, 50 percent, something like that. And let me come up to make sure I still have that gritty brush selected. I'm going to lower the size of that down to maybe about 200. And I'm going to double check the smoothing. That's this little curved line here in the bottom of the tool options. I definitely want to have my smoothing turned up because I'm going to draw a curved line. And what I'm going to do is just draw a line that comes down and follows the edge of the bottle, just to suggest a little bit of a highlight there. Next, it's time to add a new layer. So I'll tap on the Add Layer button over here in the Layer Taskbar. I'll get to my color chip, and I'll tap on the Recent Swatch for that blue-green color that I used earlier. I'll come up to the Pixel Brushes, and I'll choose the Conte Crayon Brush, which is one of the dry media brushes. And let me lower the size down a little bit to maybe about 280. And what I'm going to do is just draw a squiggly line there across the bottom of the bottle. I'll tap on that color chip again and come and get an orange-red color. Make my brush size a little bit larger here. And I'm just going to draw an arc shape, just like that, just to suggest maybe a sun over the mountains. All right, let's add another layer. I'll come back up to the pixel brushes, and I'm going to get the pastel square brush, which can be found in the dry media brushes. And with the pastel square brush, what I'm going to do is draw a mountain shape. And I'll press down on the touch shortcut in the lower left to erase the mountain where it's over the bottle, just to suggest that the mountain is in the background.
And on that same layer, let me tap the color chip and make that orange color a little bit more yellow. And let's come up and get a different brush. And I'll choose this Cezanne 1 brush, which is from the painting group of brushes. And I'll paint a simple circular shape to suggest the sun up in the sky. One of the nice things about Fresco is that you don't have to worry about saving your drawings or paintings as you're creating them. Your work is automatically saved at regular intervals as a cloud document. There are a lot of possibilities for drawing and painting in Adobe Fresco. Start exploring with the different brushes and tools and have fun following the creative pathways that you discover. Adobe Fresco is a painting and drawing app that provides a powerful set of creative tools for digital artists. Let's take a quick look at some of the basic features of the app so that you can get started creating your own artwork. We'll begin with the layers over on the right side. The active layer has a thin blue border on the thumbnail. You can change the order of a layer in the Layers panel by pressing down on the layer thumbnail and then dragging it to another location in the layer stack. Tap the Layers button at the top right of the layer taskbar to hide or show the layer stack. Below that are the layer properties where you can name a layer, choose a blend mode, or adjust the opacity of a layer. The plus symbol is the add layer button and this will add a new empty layer above the active layer. The eye icon is the layer visibility button, tap on this to hide or show the active layer. And the three dots opens up the more options menu with additional layer actions. You can use a standard two-finger gesture to zoom in or zoom out on the image, move it around on screen, or rotate the canvas. You can fit the entire image on screen with a quick two-finger pinch gesture. To view the image with a minimal interface, tap the full screen button in the upper right corner, that's those two arrows, and then tap again to return to the standard view. There's an undo button up in the upper right, and if you press on that, you can see that there's also a redo button there. You can also undo with a two-finger tap on the screen, and you can redo with a three-finger tap. You can see a list of the gestures that you can use with Fresco by tapping on the Help button up in the upper right and choosing View Gestures. Now let's take a quick look at the toolbar. There are three types of brushes in Fresco. The pixel brushes, the live brushes, which include the watercolor and the oil brushes, and the vector brushes. Tap on a tool to choose it, and if you see a small triangle on the tool icon, tap again or long press to show additional options or tools. For example, with the selection tool I've chosen here, it shows the lasso and the selection brush. If it's a brush tool, you'll see a panel showing all of the available brushes for that tool. For example, here in the pixel brushes, I can see the different brush groups. I'm going to come down and choose Painting, and then scroll through these brushes and choose Impressionist. You can tap on the star to add this brush to your favorites. You can also load Photoshop brushes by tapping the plus at the bottom of the brushes panel. And if you've already transferred your brushes to a cloud destination, you can access them by choosing Import from Files. Sometimes it's useful to have the brushes panel be open all of the time so you can easily choose and switch between different brushes. To do this, press and drag on the top of the brushes panel and you can detach it and position it anywhere on screen. You can also dock it to the side of the toolbar by dragging it over to where it aligns with the edge and letting go. This is a really handy way to work on your project and have access to all of your brushes as you're painting. To undo that, just drag it away and tap the X to close the panel. The tool options can be found docked at the bottom of the toolbar. As with the brushes panel, you can drag on these and position those anywhere on screen that you want. And just drag them back to the bottom of the toolbar to redock them. The small circle on the image in the lower left is the touch shortcut. When you press on this, it modifies the behavior of some of the tools. For instance, with a pixel or a vector brush active, it changes the brush to an eraser, allowing you to erase with all the distinctive edge and texture qualities of the selected brush. As you activate the tool and the touch shortcut, 
a small blue label will appear in the upper right corner telling you what the touch shortcut is doing. Additionally, you can drag the touch shortcut to position it anywhere on screen that works for how you like to use the app. If you tap on the Help menu, you can choose Touch Shortcuts to see a list of the different touch shortcuts you can use with Fresco. As you work in Fresco, the file is regularly being saved in the background as an Adobe Cloud document. Tapping the Home button in the upper left will close and save the file and return you to the home screen. There's a lot to explore and discover in Adobe Fresco.